Merc Cruiser Service Manual number 28 is for stern drive units having a serial number of OM and higher. You have to decide what special tools you're going to get. Some tools are special, some tools are just tools. Service manual number 11 is for older stern drive units. Manual 11 calls for a different part number tool to do the same job. If you have oil in the bellows, it comes from the drive shaft seal. That's where it comes from. Sometimes it looks like it's black because it mixes with some of the grease that might be flung off from the U-joints or dribble out of that gimbal bearing. To get at that seal, we need to remove this U-joint assembly from the drive shaft housing. Here is the drive shaft seal and seal carrier. It's important to find out why the seal failed. Here I can see that this seal is all scored on its face. And this face on the yoke is all scored up as well. That seal seems to have shifted inside the carrier and rubbed on this yoke. A new seal simply needs to be installed in this carrier squarely and positioned between the two chamfered edges of this inside diameter. To remove the old seal and to install a new one, I'm not going to buy that special tool. I'm going to use whatever tools I have in front of me. A drive shaft seal is a drive shaft seal is a drive shaft seal. I'm sure I could measure this one up and go buy one anywhere for $2.50. If that aluminum carrier is ruined, it can be bought separately and replaced. It looks to me like that seal has even spun in there a little bit and shifted at an angle in its position. That seal probably shifted in there during pressure test. And that happened because the installer didn't use any Loctite. A more typical drive shaft seal failure is caused by corrosion and pitting on the face where the seal rides on the yoke. This type of failure can be accelerated by having water in the bellows. If the drive shaft seal leaks on this yoke, I may need to replace the yoke. I tapped a new seal into the carrier.
I sniped this aftermarket part on eBay, but I would rather have an OEM part. I just use some of this 50 weight synthetic lube as my assembly lube. Oh, that was slippery. I wish I could look in there and see exactly where the seal was going to ride on the yoke, but I can't. I do keep my manual open right in front of me to ensure I put these parts back in order and facing in the right direction. This upper unit seal kit comes with enough parts to do other drives as well. I have to make sure I select the correct O-ring for this location. I want to get these drive shaft bearings all lubed up and rolling freely. This is a heavy duty bearing and gear assembly and it spins at engine speed probably 80 times a second. I want to make sure this nut is secure so when I pick up the assembly I don't drop the whole thing on the floor. Next I'm going to set the rolling resistance or the preload on those bearings. Some guy makes these spanner wrenches and sells them on eBay. Mine didn't fit over the yoke. I had to take a grinder to it to make it work. You may find that a half inch drive torque wrench doesn't fit well either. I clamped that spanner wrench to my bench vise and I set the U-joint assembly in place. I wind that lock nut down just until there's no more play. Now I can set the bearing preload. I tighten that lock nut just a couple of degrees and then measure the rolling resistance. I just put a bar in between the U-joints so that the unit can't turn 
and then I can tighten the nut another couple degrees and take another measurement. By doing this a little at a time, I ensure I won't over tighten it. I have to do this several times before it even makes a difference on the inch pound torque wrench. For my final measurements, I'll hold the outside races from turning. I like this 0 to 30 inch pound torque wrench for fine detail. This torque wrench also has an indicator on it that I can zero out and then it will record my peak reading. You have to remove the covers from the drive shaft housing in order to line up these timing marks when reinstalling the U-joint assembly. You might as well replace the shift shaft seal and bushing at the same time, and then you will have resealed the whole upper unit.